Hello, I am Kulvinder Dua, Professor of Medicine and Pediatrics at the Medical College of Wisconsin, Milwaukee, USA. And today I will be commenting on one of our studies looking at the performance of a novel self-expandable metal esophageal stent with an anti-reflux valve. The manuscript of the study is currently in press in the journal Gastrointestinal Endoscopy and on behalf of all my authors from eight U.S. centers, I would like to thank the editorial board of the journal for accepting this manuscript and for giving us this opportunity. Over the last few decades, the incidence of adenocarcinoma of the esophagus has risen by over 60%. The majority of these patients have dysphagia and have advanced disease at presentation. Self-expandable metal stents have been shown to be highly effective in palliating dysphagia with improvement of nutritional status and improvement in the quality of life. However, since majority of adenocarcinoma of the esophagus are located in the lower third of the esophagus, these stents have to be placed across the gastroesophageal junction. Studies that have specifically looked at the incidence of gastroesophageal reflux when these stents are placed across the gastroesophageal junction by using fluoroscopy or pH impedance monitoring have shown that up to 90% of these patients can have gastric contents freely reflux into the esophagus and risk aspiration. Recently, a novel self-expandable esophageal stent was introduced in the European market and in several non-European countries, which has a tricuspid anti-reflux valve. This present study was conducted to look at the performance of this stent and compare it to a standard stent which is of a similar design, except that it does not have an anti-reflux valve. Eight U.S. centers participated in this study. Patients with malignant dysphagia requiring palliation with stents to be placed across the gastroesophageal junction were enrolled in this study. Sixty patients were randomized on a one-to-one -one ratio to either receive the steady stent or the reference stent. The primary objective of this study was to evaluate improvement in dysphagia grade at two weeks following stent placement. The primary secondary objective was to evaluate improvement in gastroesophageal reflux symptoms as measured by gastroesophageal reflux disease health-related quality of life at four weeks after the stents were placed. All the stents were successfully placed. At two-week follow-up, around 75% of patients in both arms had improvement from severe, namely barely able to swallow liquids, to moderate to no dysphagia, namely were able to swallow soft diet or had no dysphagia and were eating a normal diet. In 11% of patients in both groups who had moderate dysphagia at baseline, they did not deteriorate during the two-week follow-up in both arms. In 14% of patients who had advanced dysphagia at baseline, none of the patients in both arms with the stent improved. So overall, the novel stent with the anti-reflux valve clinically was shown to be as effective as the reference stent in relieving dysphagia, thereby implying that the anti-reflux valve did not interfere with the primary function of the stent, namely relieving dysphagia. On the other hand, at four-week follow-up, the improvement 
in gastroesophageal reflux disease, health-related quality of life scores was similar in both arms. 76 patients, 76 percent of patients showed improvement of quality of life in the reference stent group compared to 58 percent in the steady stent group, but this was not statistically different. So in summary, we found that although the stent was clinically effective in relieving dysphagia compared to a standard stent, it did not show significant better performance in terms of relieving gastroesophageal reflux disease symptoms as measured by health-related quality of life scores. In terms of adverse event, they were similar in both arms, including the incidence of aspiration and migration. However, two of the steady stents spontaneously fractured in the patient and the exact reason for why this happened is not known. In conclusion, with around 90% of patients having reflux symptoms or reflux of gastric contents into the esophagus with or without symptoms as shown by pH studies and barium studies when stents are placed across the gastroesophageal junction, it does require stents that have anti-reflux valve to prevent reflux. However, that ideal stent is still not available. More studies are required to see if there is a stent that can prevent reflux as measured by objective parameters like barium studies and pH studies. The exact reason why the anti-reflux valve in this particular study did not appear to be effective could be either due to the design of the valve or because all patients were on proton pump inhibitors and this could have masked some of the reflux symptoms in the control group. Thank you.